Okay, we're recording. Um, so I'm excited for this Working Wednesday because I feel like we all get to that point in our business, right, that we just, we don't know how to close the deal. Even for me as a prez, like, I just invited this girl to one of our opportunity parties that I met on the plane, and now I'm, like, freezing, like, okay, what should I say? Wait, what should I say to follow up? So today is all about just giving you new tips for your tip jar on how to close the deal with potential loyal customers, with potential distributors, how to make warm leads that we have or cold leads that we have turn into warm leads and really how to get these people signed on to start our business or grow our business. So as we're talking and you come up with questions, either raise your hand or put them in the chat because I'm going to, um, we're going to just do a whole bunch of role playing tonight so that you can leave here feeling like, okay, I know what I want to start saying to people. Okay. That's the point of today. Um, we're going to start talking. The first things that we're going to talk about are prospecting, how to get new people, closing the deal with those people and getting them enrolled. And then also to following up. And I'm actually going to turn it over to our guest for tonight, which is my dad. He has been before he started his own business, he's been nothing but in sales and I've never been in sales. So what I have found with working with him is, oh my gosh, you're, you have all these good tips that I've never used in sales. So I invited him tonight to kind of share some of those tips with us. So dad, can you go ahead and talk about um, prospecting? If we're a brand new distributor and we start off as a brand new distributor and we're like, I don't have a lot of friends or I don't know a lot of people, how are we going to prospect to start building relationships with totally random people or people that we do know that maybe we're just not thinking about to bring them into our business? Well, I can, good evening. Thanks for joining us. What I would really begin telling you guys is some of the things I did as a new distributor. I just went through my phone book and my iPhone and I looked up everybody that was in there. I contact my doctors, my lawyers, my insurance people, um, people who I cut their yard, people I may have done general contracting with before. Um, anybody in my phone book that I ever done business with before I contact them. I couldn't contact my mom, my dad, my brothers, my sisters, my aunts and my cousins because guests had already taken all those people. So for those of you that are new, contact your mom, your dad, your, your brothers, your sisters, your aunt, your cousins, your grandparents, all those people are prospects for you as a loyal customer to try different products and service that you're selling. Another thing I would tell you to do is get very, very active involved if you don't have a large group of network of people. Get involved if you have a homeowners association. Get involved with your kids, PTA. Get involved with the church, the softball league. You have to get yourself surrounded by a large group of people that can become prospects for you so that you're able to prospect them instead of just cold calling. Um, Facebook is another thing that I know that Jessica does very well that a lot of you probably do, which is all the social media. I haven't gotten there yet on social media. Um, so I've just been doing my, all of mine, just networking through these resources that I've been sharing with you. Um, so those are the things I would share with you from a prospecting aspect of it, of people that you should branch out and reach out to. Okay, so with that, um, what I took away from that, and this is something that I didn't do, is I didn't do a good job going through my phone list because I was scared. I, I was scared. Um, I was scared of rejection because those were my warmest leads. So can you give us a couple different ways or... Uh, what the conversation should sound like when we pick up the phone to call a cold lead or, or to call somebody, I'm sorry, in our phone. What does that sound like when we barely know anything about the business and how can I help new distributors get over that fear? Okay. What I would tell you is this, and from everything I've learned and watching different people that's involved in this business, most people even just do a lot of social media, texting and emailing and Facebooking people to invite them to get involved in the business so you can begin to share with them what you're doing. I think personally you should make that phone call. I think it's very difficult 
and challenging for someone to tell you no over the phone. It's very easy for them to tell you no through Facebook or through a text message or an email. So if you know the person and they somewhat of a business associate or a friend, call them. Don't text them. Don't email them. Don't social media them. Call them. And when you call them, call them with some level of excitement about what you're doing. Um, I can only give you examples of what I've done and examples of things that I've learned. So when I got involved in the business, I would call one of my bankers up. Hey, John, I just got involved in a very, very exciting company, a new company, a health and wellness um, company that my daughter's been involved with for the last 17, years, 17 months. It's called It Works. We have a lot of different nutritional products. I would love for you to be a test customer for me and try one of these products for 90 days. And I want to give you access to my website so we can see which products and service that's going to work great for you. Would you take the time and do that with me? They're going to say yes or they're going to say no. If they say no, not now, this is not a good time, then follow up with, great, John, not a problem. When will it be a good time so I can follow up with you so we can go through this process? And then John's going to begin to tell you when is going to be a good time. When John tells you that, you take out a ticket card and you write down John's information, John's information, the time that John asked you to follow up on him, follow up with him, and then don't follow up with John and don't bug John and don't continue to Facebook John or text John until John told you when to follow up with him. And if you take this and you use a one through 31 ticket card box, it's kind of like a follow-up system like this. It's got 1 through 31, and whatever the date that John tells you to call him back on, he call me on the 8th. You take this card and you put it behind the 8th in your tickler card. So on the 8th, when you go in your office in that morning to start putting your 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 hours in of prospecting with it works, you take all the cards out on the 8th, and you got all your notes, what you talked about, what John wanted, which what, is he going to be try as a DT? Is he going to come on as a... LC, all that information is here. If John said, you know what, it's not a really good time, can you hit me back up in January? Well, in this tickler box, not only do I have 1 through 31, but I also have January through December. So now this card is going to be placed behind the month with, with the date that John told me to follow up on him in this tickler box. So when January comes around, I'm going to go in my tickler box. I'm going to pull out all my cards from January. Then I'm going to look at the dates on those cards. And those dates, I'm going to say, call me on the 5th, call me on the 8th, call me on the 10th. And I'm going to take those cards, and I'm going to rotate those cards back to the number of the date that John told me to call him. So my follow-up is going to be very specific to when the customer told me to follow up with them. So often, we become pushy salespeople and we constantly trying to shove this business down people throat to get them to join because the company decided to put excuse me to put up a a um a, um, a bonus a, a diamond bonus so everybody who's bought in for diamond all of a sudden now they want to start working harder to hit this bonus well i can promise you if you just be consistent with how you're working and how you're prospecting you're going to eventually that pipe's going to burst if, if you pressure bus is a pipe. So if you fill up your tickler box with a bunch of hot leads and follow up calls over time, this box going to get so thick when it bursts, that means dollar signs for you because every time it bursts, you getting paid because you bring it on a new law customer or distributor. It's no different if you take the time and think about how many people have told you no. And the more no's you hear, you're going to hear more no's and more yeses. Well, pressure busts a pipe, right? Well, when you constantly being told no and you decide to give up and you throw in the tower, that is the pressure that is burst on your behalf because you have gotten so tired of all these no's. So those no's is the pressure that busts your pipe when you quit. The yeses or the pipes that's going to burst when you start making money because you kept the follow-up system and you stayed with it and you never quit. I tell my daughter all the time, be patient with everybody you work with because the way I look at it, some of us are sprinters, some of us are joggers, some of us like power walking, some of us like walking. 
I can tell you this, being in the health and fitness industry, the person that sprints is just going to burn the calories faster than the person that jogs. The person that jogs is going to burn the calories faster than the person that power walks. And the person that power walks is going to burn the calories faster from the person that just walked. But you know what? They all are going to burn the same amount of calories. Someone's just going to burn it faster because the pace that they decide to go at. So stop comparing yourselves and your prospecting about what you've accomplished to other people that's in your downline or in your upline. Compare yourself to you. Just make a commitment, stick with the program, continue the prospect, and I promise you, you will get there. Some of us just run faster than others. Okay. And I like that analogy because when he gave that to me, you guys, I realized I was getting so focused on, I want to hit this rank. I want to hit this rank. And I lost focus on staying organized with my follow-ups. Like we can't just go out and talk to a whole bunch of people and forget who we talk to. You know, I had to really start you utilizing my calendar or utilizing a follow-up system. So I encourage you, if you don't have a follow-up system, maybe you like the one that he shared with you. Maybe you like putting notes in your phone and doing it on your, you know, having reminders set on your phone, but whatever follow-up system you choose to use, like you have to have a follow-up system or you're never going to get that stack of hot leads that is eventually going to, you know, basically be the growth of all the seeds that you're planting if you don't have a follow-up system. Um, okay, next I want to talk about um, what? closing those deals, those prospects yeah. that you're prospecting or the people that you're reaching out to. How do you seal the deal? I've heard so many different stories. Can y'all hear me? Okay, yeah. I've heard so many different stories and testimonies that people will say where they have trouble closing the deal. And I'm going, a lower customer in this business, they having difficulty closing the deal? A, a DT, they having difficulties? I, it's hard for me to fathom that because I think the product and service that we offer is so remarkable, unbelievable, of the opportunity that we share with people. You need to be very enthusiastic about what you're doing and what you're selling and make sure that, that can, you convey that to the people that you're trying to recruit. Um, I had a... a young lady I had lunch with this week that's in my downline. And one of the things that she was telling me that she was struggling with is her approach. And then she began to tell me what she was struggling with when the people, um, she, she gave me an objection. What was that objection that Thea gave me? She gave me an objection. Um, oh, no. They used the term, oh, girl, no, I don't want to do that. I'm not a salesperson. And, and she was like, she just froze because she really didn't know how to handle that. Well, let me share something with you guys. I've been in marketing sales all my life prior to getting involved in it works. I was in the health and fitness industry for 27 years, and I was a regional vice president that was in charge of marketing and sales, and I was responsible for the production that had to take place in our company. So I've been through every sales organization and training, professional selling skills, services that you can imagine in my lifetime. People have a real misconception about sales. Sales is product knowledge. Sales is conversation. Sales is just a not by closing a deal or being pushy, trying to push something on people. So I'm going to give you some, a few examples. When people tell you no, or they give you an excuse or they reason for why they want, do not want to get involved, the first thing you have to always remember to an objection of someone refusing to get involved, always the first thing you have to do is you have to agree with them. I'll give you an example. So when a young lady says to me, no, I don't want to do that because I'm just not a salesperson. The first thing out of your mouth should be, you know what, Joanna, I agree. Neither was I. This is different. Before I got involved in It Works, I thought I had to be a salesperson. But I'm telling you, you don't. When would be a good time? I can't wait to share this with you so I can show you what It Works is all about. Close them on an appointment. Close them on a meeting. Close them on a date. Stop trying to sell this product and this service and this business through text messages and emails, 
get in front of people. That's the people that you can get in front of. We can talk about what you can do for people that you can't get in front of. But now we're talking about the people that we can get in front of. Always agree with them. Doesn't matter what the objection is. Always agree. But you have to respond immediately when you get, when you get the objection. I'll give you another scenario. You know what? I really just don't have the money. You know what, Joanna? I agree. I did not have the money either when Jessica approached me. That's fine. When will you have it? And then shut up and listen. Joanna's going to tell you when she's going to have it. It may be one month from now, two months from now, three months from now. It doesn't matter, right? When she tells you, what do you do? You fill out your tickler card. You get all of Joanna's information except her credit card. Say, Joanna, when you get involved three weeks from now or a month from now, you want to try the business where you start making money with me or you just want to test the product and be a lower customer. She's going to tell you. Write it down. You know what? File Joanna away. Just file her away. Remember that comment we talked about, filling the pipeline, pressure bust a pipe? The more you do this, the bigger this is going to get over time. But you have to make that commitment to commit to so many days, so many hours, that you're going to put into your business and work it. And if you consistently do that, I promise you over time, you're going to, um, you're going to be successful. So what I want to share with you. Oh, wait, let me stop you there. You mentioned a tip earlier to me about when, when Joanna or whoever tells you, I don't have the money and you say, when, you know, great. When do you think you, you know, when do you think you will? And they tell you, you mentioned take their information just, right then. I just shared that. You did? Yeah. Oh. I say yeah. just take all their information on here, file them away, follow up on them when they tell you. Follow up call. Hey, Joanna, I could not sleep last night, girl. I was so excited about this day because I was really looking forward to you becoming a lower customer. Which car did you want to put it on? See, and that was a huge tip for me, you guys, is because I will have a, I'll have a prospect and I know I'm supposed to follow up with them. And then I get nervous because I'm like, great, now I have to ask for their name, their address, their billing, their shipping. And I'm like crossing my fingers and praying that they're not going to back out. So that was like a huge tip for me is when they tell you yes, write all their information down, file it away so that when you do your follow up, your, your phone conversation or your time with them is extremely minimal. Your follow up is not about getting paid, <laughs> you know, ching ching dollar signs, a loyal customer or a DT. Your follow up shouldn't be going through a whole script and presentation again. You've already done that. And they told you, no, I'm not ready, Luther. I can't do this now. I'm going to do it here, blah, blah, blah. Write it down, file it away. Put in a very organized system and boom, when you come to work, pull it all out, make your follow-up calls. And your follow-up calls got to be with some enthusiasm. It's got to be with some excitement. Jessica, it's great hearing from you today. I've been looking forward to this day for three months now. Girl, I'm so glad you're finally coming to join the team. What car do you want to put it on? You don't ask them, are you still joining? You don't ask them, are you still interested? No, you assume that they are because that's what they told you. When we had a conversation about this three months ago, Jessica, one of the things we discussed that you were going to get involved on April the 8th. It's the 8th. What card, girl? Come on, stop playing with me. And just ask for the sale. Ask for the order. Okay? Um, what other objections or, or stalls that you guys may have that you have challenges overcoming? Why don't we take the time and Role play and let me share with you my experience from a professional sales tactics through conversation, how you overcome those things. So yeah, if you guys have questions, if you want to put them in the chat, I've got the chat open where I can read them and I'll stop them and just read the question out loud. Or if you want to raise your hand or unmute yourself um, with some of the objections that we hear, you know, I know one of them is money like oh i just don't have the money right now and so now what do we say to them when they say i don't have the money now we know we know to say okay when will you and then we put that information down nope here's the no first. nope when they tell you an objection i don't have the money always remember oh, yeah. a in the alphabet the letter a on every objection you agree jessica I agree. Girl, I didn't have the money either when my dad tried to sign me up. Not a problem. When will you have it? And shut up. And let them tell you and let them talk and tell you when they're going to have it. 
And when they tell you, what do you do? You write it down. Okay, you we have some take all the information. Okay, so when they say, um, I'll wait till I see someone that I know have some results before I try it. What can you say to that person? Or so, have, they say, I'll wait until I know, I'll wait until I see somebody that I know have some results. That's happened. That's a good one. Like, okay. how do you seal the deal with that person? Do we send them a before and after picture of somebody that, you do, know? Do you know me? What are they going to say? Yes. Oh, Here's great. a copy of my paycheck in June. No, Here. we can't show that. It's okay. a, no, it's against compliance. But you can, okay. you can send okay. a copy of your personal results. If somebody's like, I'll wait till I see somebody who's had results before I try it. Okay, so how, so like you can say, do you know Do you know me? Mm -hmm. Here is my okay. before okay. and after picture you, of this. You, you can say, you know what? I was skeptical too. I agree with you. However, you do know me. I'm on the products. I'm telling you I take the greens and it makes me feel great. When would you like to try the greens? Then shut up and let them tell you. Because they have to have their own experience. They can't use a cop out as an excuse about someone else having results. You're gonna believe their results versus your own? Think about that. When, if someone said that, you saying you're gonna believe somebody else's story or someone else's testimonial before you get involved, this company has thousands of testimonials that you can share with them. I had another conversation. There's another question. I'm getting a lot of, I know several people that already sell it. I always go for the, that's great. There's such a great demand for this business, et cetera, but it's not enough. So she's not closing the deal with it. So what do you say to somebody when they say, I already know a lot of people that sell it. I don't think I can be successful in it because I like three of my friends already sell it. Girl, I agree. I felt the exact same way you did when I was approached. But let me share something with you. That's why I'm so excited about it. That's why I got involved, because it's nothing like you think. Why is there a 7-Eleven on every corner? Why is there a gas station on every corner? There's so much to go around for all of us. Let's set up a time I can meet with you and show you what I'm talking about. Think about that for an example, people. Everywhere you drive, there's a freaking gas station. How do they all stay open? How do they all make money? Because there's so many people in this world. There's so many people in this city. There's so many people in this state. Don't let that stop you from saying, I agree. I thought and felt the exact same way that you did when I was approached. But girl, this is exciting. These women and guys are, are just making a, 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 a buttload of money and I can't wait to share this with you. When would be a good time I can sit down and show you this? Okay, here's another one. I like that. Somebody said yes. Um, okay, my PLC, like that they like that. Okay, somebody said my PLC told me today that she was interested but needed to get back on her feet. I didn't realize she was struggling financially. How do you ask, some, how do you ask somebody that will be if they're having money issues? I agree. <laughs> it doesn't change, folks. I had money issues the first time I was approached. That's why I got involved, because I wanted to stop having money issues. Girl, I can't wait to share this with you. When can we meet? I like that. Okay, while y'all are putting more questions of like role playing in the chat, I wanted to talk about um, the, the right atmosphere when we're blitzing and the expectation of when to seal the deal. I didn't realize this, but I went to this, um, I went to this party and there was about, I don't know, probably like 40 people there. And I witnessed a distributor talking to four girls, literally right there trying to seal them as a distributor at this party. And I about froze and it dawned on me, you know what, Jessica, like, some people really think that's an appropriate place to seal the deal with a distributor. And it's not. So will you talk about how you can meet people out like that and what you're supposed to be doing to, to close the deal because that's not the appropriate environment? When you join these different organizations that we talked about at the beginning of this call and you get involved in parties on like just Christmas parties or holiday parties or, or baby shower parties or, you know, these different social events, I can tell you for me, 
I'm always wearing this little armband that says it works. I know a lot of people that have jobs or afraid to promote and, and wear products. I always wear my company shirts everywhere I go. The reason I do that is just basically a conversation piece. It's just something to pique someone's interest for them to begin to ask me a question. When they ask me what is it works or what is your company or this and that, I don't try to in that social environment to tell them everything about my company or tell them everything about it works. What I do is just close an appointment. I close a meeting date and time I can meet with them to share my enthusiasm and share my excitement about it works. Once you get them in person and you sit them down, then you can begin to explain to them the features and the benefits about it works. One of the biggest thing I would tell a beginner and even a veteran, learn your product, product knowledge. You need to understand the features and the benefits for every single, every single product that it works offered. I had a conversation with one of the young ladies in my downline this morning, and one of the things that she talked about, that there was this friend that she had that had a special type of illness, and I can't recall exactly what the illness was, but it works had a product that this person can take to help them feel better with whatever issues that they was having. And my downline began to tell me how she was trying to recruit this person as a lower customer because she knew that the person really didn't have an interest in being a, a distributor, a DT. So I said, well, tell me about that. So she began to tell me, oh, I didn't know about the product. I went online, I called your daughter. She told me, yes, we do have this product. And I went to this website and I downloaded all this information that gave me all this product knowledge and expertise about this product that will work for my friend who had this illness. I said, yes, and what'd you do with it? And then she began to tell me that she emailed it to her and she uh, texted to her or whatever she, or she scanned it and emailed it. You ain't closing no deal by emailing her product knowledge. Share the product knowledge with her. Joanna, I found a product that will work for you that can help cure, help you with the diabetes that you have and the fact that you can't sleep at night. The product that we call is called whatever it's called. It's the, 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 the wow. And here's what the wow does. It does this, 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 and this. Great, we found something that we know you can use. Let's get you signed up as a loyal customer and try this for 90 days. Let me take your information. I'm so excited for you. Sending her information to read, just making her a better reader. I mean, that's not closing the deal. That's not getting her on the product. Okay. Um, okay, sorry, I think my question was misunderstood. My PLC is struggling and wants to try product. When do I follow up with them about ordering? I offered her the cheapest item we have, but that's not what she wants. You, you, you asked, she wants to try a product, but she doesn't have the money. You asked a question. I agree. I didn't have money to try the products when I was first approached. When would you have it? Always agree and then follow up with asking the question. When? That's okay, I understand. Times are tough. That's why I got involved in it works to make some extra income so my times no longer be tough. But it's okay. A lot of people don't have the money. Joanna, when would you have the money? Ask the question and then shut up. They're going to tell you. People like to talk. And when they tell you, what do you do? You write it down. You file her away in that pipe, that tickler box, and you fill it up. And eventually, guess what? It's going to burst. And when it bursts, ching, ching, dollar signs. We get paid. Okay, this one says, I've been a distributor for five months and I have not landed one distributor. They say no money, no time, people they know sell it. There's always an excuse to not do it, but I can't get a yes. Say that again. Somebody's been in it for five months mm -hmm. and they hear just, they don't have, like, from every distributor, they don't have time, they don't have money, um, mm -hmm. and they know people already that sell it. There's always an excuse, like, she's one that's been in it for five months and she mm -hmm. feels like she just can't get a yes. Okay, the person that wrote that comment, I will go back to what I just said before. Agree with them. Yes, I know exactly what you but said. But you know what, maybe ask, how long, uh, you, how you long get, are they following up? No, you got to get an appointment. You can't, again, you agree with them, 
and tell them you felt the exact same way that they felt prior to you getting involved. And that's what's so unique and different about It Works. I love to share it with you. When can we get together so we can sit down and I can show you the Pacific breakdowns and details? If you get the individual that asked this question, how many of those people you truly got to the closing table to sit down over breakfast, lunch, or dinner with your upline, someone that has a lot more a um, lot more skills, a lot more um, time in the business, a lot more product knowledge that can assist and help you seal the deal. So many of you try to do this alone. That's the beauty about this business. It's what's the thing? One mission, one team, one mission. I rely on my daughter so much. You know what I do? I just go and recruit. I just go and recruit. And I say, honey, you know the strategic planning. Put them where they need to go. I can tell you this, and I'm probably going to hit diamond this month, which is probably after 90 days of being in the business. Um, I got 18 of the 24 distributors in my downline. Of those 18 distributors, I've only physically enrolled 12 of them, okay? Eight last month and four, uh, eight, eight in June and four in July. But of those 16 distributors, only three of those distributors have gone out and recruited they fall lower customers. Well, guess what? I wasn't going to leave all that fast star bonuses on the table because my distributors decided that they wasn't going to work. So I went out and recruited a bunch of um, LCs and said, Case, what do I do with these? She called them in. Dad, I think you need to put them under here because you're going to get a $100 bonus. Dad, I need you to put them under here because you get a $100 bonus. So I recruited these people for my people, and my people are getting checks, and they haven't begun to work the business. But I'm never going to give up on them. I'm going to continue to train with them. I'm going to continue to work with them and teach them and give them strategies and ideas how to close the deal. And eventually, they're going to come around. They're going to get seasonal. They're going to be two months into the business, three months into the business, four months into the business. They're going to start using some of these techniques and have some success. And then next, this was going to jumpstart them and move them forward. Okay, what if you're a shy person and somebody, okay, what if you're a shy person and what happens if somebody says yes and then you follow up with them and they tell you no? Say that again now. They're a shy person. Yes, they sure. had somebody say yes and then mm -hmm. when they followed up, they had that person say no. Oh, Joanna, why? I was so excited to enroll you this morning. What happened? Then shut up and listen. Let her tell you what happened. And when she tells you what happened, agree with her and go right back into the sales mode. Not a problem, girl. January is not a good month. I understand you're coming off the holidays. Don't give up on me because I'm not going to give up on you. When would you like to do it? I like that. Don't give up on me because I'm not going to give up on you. And then file Joanna away again. Put her in your tickler card. Fill up the pipeline because eventually it's going to burst. And when it bursts, ching, ching, it's money signs for you. Don't give up. Um, Did I answer that question? Yeah. Okay. Multiple times. Okay. How, how many times do you follow up without getting a response? I don't so know. let's say somebody told you when to follow up with them and they, you put them in the box or you file them away in whatever system you're using and you follow up and they just go ghost on you. They just stop responding to your texts. They don't answer your phone calls. Well, first of all, you, if you, you – a follow-up is not less, unless you made contact. <laughs> so a follow-up just not because you made the phone call. Did you talk to the person? I don't count a follow-up just because. Don't send a text message. Don't send an email. Don't send a Facebook request. Call them. Joanne, I was so excited for this day. I couldn't sleep last night. My, my story doesn't change, see. I'm pretty consistent about what I say because I've always told my kids growing up, if you tell the truth, you never have to remember what you said. If you always tell the truth, you never have to remember what you said. So if you get consistent about how you working and how you overcome objections or stalls or excuses that people make for their reasons not joining, that consistency is going to come out so natural every time you say it. You're just going to be saying it to a different person. So if you make a follow-up call and he or she doesn't answer the phone, that's fine. You call her the next day. You don't answer the phone. That's fine. Then you call them the next day. How many times do they say, no, I'm not interested. Please don't call me again. 
then that's when you stop. Because again, you're only doing what Joanna asked you to do. So you're not being pushy. You're not being pushy. You're only doing what Joanna agreed to do two months ago. She asked you to follow up her on this month, this day, and this time. Excuse my French, but Joanna's the one being the coward. You're not being pushy because you only know what she asked you to do. But if you push in the envelope and she didn't ask you to do it, now you being pushy. You don't need to be pushy. Sales is not about pushy. It's about communication. It's about product knowledge and closing the deal by being a good listener. A salesperson talk. A closer listen. Listen to what the customer tells you and execute based on what he or she tells you. And you're going to be very successful in this business. Like I say, some of you are going to get there faster than others, but that's okay. Um. What do you tell people when they tell you they're interested in being a loyal customer or a distributor and then you follow, okay, we just said that one. Um, oh, somebody just shared their screen. Uh, let's see here. Hold on. Somebody is sharing their screen and I don't know who it is. Is everybody seeing that or just me? Brittany, will you unmute yourself? Jessica, it says uh, Connie Halperty. Who? Yeah, Connie. Oh, oh, she just. Okay, cool. It was okay. Um, what do you do? Okay, she's gone. Okay, cool. I'm getting people to try, but they want to do retail, not a loyal customer. How do you convince them to do a loyal customer? They say they have to try before they become a loyal customer. Isn't a, a, a retail is a just re a one-time purchase. But a retail is probably two times the cost, right? Mm -hmm. Well, they can really do a lower customer for two months and try it at the same price of the three months. Well, they have to do it for three months. Right, I'm saying that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, to answer that question, when someone, if someone said to me, I want to be a, um, a, a retail customer, to try it, um, to see if I like it um, before I want to commit long term. They think a lower customer may be a lot longer than 90 days. I think you just need to, first of all, agree with them. You know what? I certainly can agree with you and understand why you feel like you want to test the water. But test the water at the 40% discount, not pay the 100% retail. That doesn't make good business sense for you. Not only that, it's going to give you 90 days for the stuff to really to get into your system to really work and has the maximum effects that it's going to have. And you doing it for 30 days. I had a young lady tell me that about the wraps. She said, you know, I did the wraps for one day and then I did the wraps and then I measured myself and I lost an inch. She said, then I did the wraps another day and I slept in them and I got up. And I did my measurements, and I didn't lose anything. I said, well, how many wraps is in the box? She said, four. I said, then do the whole cycle. Do the whole cycle. Complete the cycle. Do your before picture. Do your after pictures. Do your before measurements. And do your after measurements. If you, have, if you do it like you was doing it, you lost an inch, you didn't lose anything. You lost an inch, you didn't lose anything, and you did it four times, two times you're going to be very disappointed. But if you did it at the end of the four wraps, one time, you're going to be very excited because you're going to see a two-inch difference, and that's going to motivate you. That's what I would encourage you to say to that person that wants to be a lower customer, that wants to be a retail customer. The purpose of the lower customer base is that 90 days for the stuff to really get into your system so it can really get dialed in and start working very effective for you. Don't pay retail when you can pay wholesale. Let's try it for 90 days. What do you say? And you just try to sell them on why they should try for 90 days versus for 30 days. One, the cost. And two, give it more time for you to get more consistent doing what you're doing. Um, what, what if you ask them when and they won't give you a date? They say they'll let you know or they'll get back to you. And that's fine. I agree with you that you're not sure about when you want to do it, but we got to set up a tentative time because I don't want you to forget about me because I'm not going to forget about you. So let's set up a realistic tentative time that worked for you. You want to do it a week from now, next month, next You tell me, when is appropriate for me to follow up with you? Don't accept I will call you because they ain't calling you. 
do your follow-up. Um, I had several people I enrolled as LOA customers on well, Sunday. Another question. Okay. What are some good ways to send more personal when message? When, what are some good ways to sound more personal when messaging somebody, reaching out to people to try the product or be a distributor? Say it again now. What's a more personal way if if they're going to send a message? If they're going, what is a more personal way to send that message? Um, to recruit a lower customer or a distributor. Okay, is this someone that lives out of town that you? I'm just assuming is this Probably is so. this someone that lives out of town? Whoever asked this question, is this someone that lives out of town that you can't reach? Is this someone local that you scared to death to sit down with them at an appointment? I mean, I need to know because that makes a difference. Well, okay, so while she's answering, let's address if they're, they're friends on Facebook. Okay. So they're, so they're on Facebook. Like, she doesn't know them, I guess, well enough to sit down with them. So how can you be more personal on a message? I, I would just send them, if, if, they, if, they re, if they ask a request of me on Facebook and I have to respond to them on Facebook, I would just respond to them about how I respond now. I'm, I'm very excited. I'm in a new chapter in my life. I'm very excited and motivated about this new company. I just got involved with this called It Works. I would love to share it with you. Um, these, um, these women are doing some amazing things and making a lot of money. And uh, I just would love to share it with you. When would be a good time that I can call you so that we can talk through the process? I wouldn't ever try to close a deal through Facebook. I want to get those people on the phone. I would keep trying to close the deal and sell them on a phone call, a communications as something that we can talk about. I will talk about everything under the sun that was he warm and feeling, how's the kids, how's your husband, what are you doing? That's fine and dandy, but you got get you have to always get back to when is appropriate time I can call you and walk you through this process. I think you will really, really, really enjoy it. I would not try to close that deal over Facebook. I would consistently try to close it on a phone call. Um, somebody's asking about cold. I saw somebody ask about cold messaging. If you'll expand on that question, because I will tell you, I, I do not agree with cold messaging. I think it's spamming people. They didn't ask for any information. I would, I got a cold message from somebody who was a distributor yesterday that said, Hey girl, have you tried that crazy rap thing? It let me know she had never taken the time to see that I was a, a distributor. She never took the time to get to know me. And it was such a turnoff. So I would never, ever, ever cold message. And, and here's what I would tell you people about cold calling or cold messaging. As let's put ourselves as a salesperson, as a salesperson, that is a very, very, very difficult way to try to grow your business. I mean, it, you, would, you would get so deflated working through cold leads after cold leads after cold leads with strangers trying to get them involved in this business. What's wrong with your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your uncle, your aunt, your cousin, your lawyer, your doctor, your dentist? Where you go get your gas every morning? Um, your, your kids play sports. What about all the parents that's associated with your kids' sports? The PTA, the Homeowners Association. I mean, join the church, the choir. There are so many different resources, people that you worked with, people that you've worked with in the past. I got a meeting on Thursday morning at the club for breakfast, for breakfast with a guy and his wife I haven't seen for eight years, but we're friends on Facebook, and he lives in Frisco. I live in Frisco, and he's doing home sales, and I'm in It Works, and I do home sales. I'm getting him to breakfast about one thing. It works. I'm, 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 I'm having that breakfast to talk to him about It Works, not homes. What do you do? So you should never have to work a cold lead. You can, I don't think anybody on this phone call or on this chat or Zoom, whatever y'all call these things, that don't know people. And we all know people. Okay, this one says, um, what do you do when you have a, dist a distributor that quits? What do you do when you have a distributor, a distributor that quits? Quit your organization. <laughs> Folks, <laughs> <laughs> if you've never been dumped by a man or a woman, what do you mean? What do you do if they quit? You move on. You you can't save everybody in this business, people. And don't try it. 
you know, work with the people that want to work, work with the people that have the same interest and passion and desire about being successful and get out of this financial rut that this country is in. Worry about that downline that wants to work. I'm not going to put any energy and time and effort in my downline of people that don't want to work that quick. That, that's pretty easy for me. <laughs> No, not because I know how hard I'm going to work to try to help them make money and grow their business. And if they can't see the passion and the love and the training and the expertise and the teaching and the knowledge that I'm going to share with them to help them grow, I'm sorry. And I don't mean to brag, but I'm already rich. I'm not doing this for the money. I'm not doing it because I need the money. But yes, I'm doing it for the money because it's easy money. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't. I, I won't try to stop the ship from sinking. I'm not, nobody can save the Titanic when it was sinking, could they? I mean, I, I, that's, that's just one fish dead. I'm, gonna, I'm moving on. That's what I would do. But maybe you may have a different solution. That's how I would handle it if somebody quit. Um, talk about planting and getting, getting out. We haven't talked about that. Excuse me? Like planting the seed and getting out. Like don't oversell when you're in front of people. Like people tend to oversell because they freeze up and they, so they just talk, 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 talk. Remember we talked about say your piece and then book an appointment and stop talking. Yeah, um, just ask me the question about how do you plant the seed and get out when you're in a social environment and you're talking to someone about your business. Let them socialize and enjoy that evening, whatever that function is. Just sell, just close them on an appointment. Plant the seed. Get them on, get them on, get them on Facebook. Get them to an appointment, get them to breakfast, get them to lunch, get them to dinner. Let's sit down over a meal, let's eat and let's just socialize and have a good time and I'll then share your story with them. Share your story with them. I tell people all the time, I always share my daughter's story when I start my presentation to try to enroll and recruit someone. You need to share somebody's story, but eventually, guess what? You're going to have to start sharing your own story. Now I can do that. I can tell a newbie how to get to Ruby. You know why? Because I've done it. Next month, I'll know how to tell a Ruby and show a Ruby how to go to Ruby for Diamond. You know why? Because I've done it. So when you can share information that you've done and what made you so successful, and you can give that testimony and that story, that's what's going to close the deal. You don't have to be sell, 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 sell. Just share the good news. Share the good news. That's what the gospel is, good news. Share the good news. Every meeting I've ever gone to, it amazes me the amount of money that these people are making and the stories that they, I can't wait till I get on Facebook and, and I understand social media. I can't imagine how much money I'm going to make because I haven't even started doing that yet. I'm just talking to people that I know and people that I run into and people in my phone book and people I met on the golf course. We're going to, okay, so y'all, we have about 10 minutes left on the call. If um, we, that, that's it. Okay, we, we've gone through our list of what we wanted to share with you tonight. So, um, the, oh, one of the points that I wrote down that I wanted to talk about is, like he said, you know, you have to be patient and you have to have a certain timetable that you're going to commit to reaching out to this amount of people a day or having this many lunches a week or something like that. But understanding that you have to be patient to allow that box of hot leads to fill, but don't confuse being patient with being lazy. You've got to be actively working all the time and planting new seeds constantly to fill up that bucket of hot lists or a hot list for you to work with, but you, you have to be patient with your list, but you can't be lazy thinking people are just going to come to you because that's just, that's just not how it's going to happen. If you say you're going to commit to five hours a week, or if you're going to commit to 10 hours a week or 40, 50 hours a week, like my daughter, whatever you make a personal commitment to yourself that you're going to do, just be true to yourself and do it. Don't make excuses about why you're not having success are you doing it every day? Are you doing it every week? Are you doing it every month? Are you doing it every year? If you're not, hell, if success was easy, everybody would have it. This is not easy. It's easy money, but you got to work. You have to work this business to be successful at this business. It ain't going to just fall out of the freaking sky and say, sign me up. It doesn't happen that way. You have to go out there and create this stuff. So give it that five hours a week. I'm committing to 10 hours a week. Believe me, 
I go into overtime with my 10 hours a week because I work it. And you need to do the same thing. And I know you'll be successful at it. It's too easy. Okay, do we have anybody that has any last minute uh, comments, questions? Oh, I had this objection. What would you say to this? Um, before we end the Zoom. Damali, hold on, let me unmute you. I see your hand. Okay, you're unmuted. Somebody asked it earlier, but I think you were scrolling so fast that you didn't see it. But they asked, what would your object, your uh, response be to, I don't have the time, which we know we're going to agree that we know that. But then what do we say after we agree that when they say that they don't have the time? Oh, yeah, that's a good one. What's that? Damali. Damali, good question. I agree. Oh, hold on. <laughs> Let me mute everybody. So that you can... <laughs> she said, no, what you going to do? <laughs> Is it Damali? Yeah, Damali. Damali. If someone said that to me, okay, what I would say, you know what, Damali? I agree with you. Because when I was first approached six, 17 months ago by my daughter, I was so busy running my business and I didn't have time. And I understand that. When would you have time? And then write it down. They may say one month. They may say two months. They may say three months. They may say six months. Just respect what they say to you. Listen to what they say. Remember, a salesperson talk, a closer listen. So just listen to what the customer tell you. I understand, Damali, you don't have time. I didn't have time 17 months ago when my daughter, you know, approached me about it. When now she's making $20,000 a month. Hell, I wish I'd have taken the time 17 months ago, but I didn't. And I understand that. So when would you have the time? So that's the story I would tell because that's a true story. Tell them the truth. Did I answer that question? Okay. Okay, anybody else? Me, me, me. Okay, um, will you unmute yourself, whoever just said me? Because I can't find you. Mute yourself. Hey, how's it going? Um, my, my thing is with people that say they want to because I guess maybe they want to be nice um, and then they back out or or they say you know I got stuff to take care of first but then you know I see them on social media going out to you know Cincinnati Reds games or other stuff and spend all the money on this and then I'm just asking for you know you know this this little bit and I mean how do I pull them in to that away from all that this, this, what's your name? My name's Chris. Chris, this exact thing just happened to me yesterday with my daughter. I had breakfast with a guy at the club that I used to work when I used to be in the health club industry several years ago. And this guy is 68 years old and he started a sign business. And in that sign business, I purchased a flag, an SFA flag and a Texas Tech flag, yard signs for my daughter and my son. And I used to work with this guy. Hadn't seen him in eight, nine years. Um, so I'm out. Hey, man, I love to share with you what I'm doing. Invite him to lunch. This was three, four weeks ago. Shared It Works with him. He said, hey, man, timing is not right. I need to get back with you. Not a problem. When did you want me to get back with you? He said three, four weeks. I followed up with him three, four weeks. He came to breakfast again, which was yesterday. Yesterday at breakfast, he told me, Yes, I'm going to sign up. What do I need to do? So I get him on the phone with my daughter so my daughter can go through the process to sign him up. He didn't feel comfortable giving his social and his credit card over the phone. He said, can you call me later at 5 o'clock? So my daughter follows up with him later yesterday evening at 5 o'clock. And when they had a conversation yesterday evening, he began to tell my daughter, you know, I went online. I was reading some things. I'm at a stage in my life. I think I'm going to pass. Um, I, I, I'll get back with you in the next 48 hours. I don't think I'm going to do this. So then my daughter shared that information with me. When she did that, I called him. Say, Bob, what's going on? He didn't answer. I left him a real nice message. Bob, what's going on? I'm, you floored me, man. I, I, I'm a little confused about you not wanting to get involved anymore when I thought you were so excited and motivated about doing this. But hey, it's okay. Just give me a call back and share with me what changed your mind and why you didn't want to do it. The gentleman called me back today and he said to me, you know, Luther, I didn't say I wasn't going to do it. I need 48 hours. I, I say, Bob, hey, it's okay, man. You don't have to do it. It's okay, brother. It's okay. Just support my business and become a loyal customer. Buy something for $10, $15, $20, $30. Just support me that way. 
can you do that? If I don't become a distributor tomorrow, Luther, yes, I will. I'll become a loyal customer. Boom, I close the deal. It's okay if you don't want to get into business. I at least got him as a loyal customer. So when you push and push and push and they don't want to do it, what was his name? What was your name again? Chris. Chris, then get him on something. <laughs> get them as a loyal customer. Let me let me get your information. Let me write it down. Let's just try some products. I know you're not ready now to get into the business. Let's do this. Did that help you? Did that answer your question? Yeah, that helps a lot. Appreciate it. Okay. That it just happened to me yesterday. Prime example of what you just shared with me, and that's how I handle it. Now we'll see tomorrow and the next day if he becomes a loyal customer. That's what he told me. So I'm got to believe what he told me, and I'll follow up on him in the next day if I don't hear from him. Okay. All right, sounds good. Anybody else? I think they're tired of hearing I agree. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay, I'm going to scroll through the pages one time to make sure I don't see anybody's hand raised, and then we'll close out. Okay, I think that's everyone. All right, well, thank you guys for jumping on this Working Wednesday. I hope you learned something. I know I picked up some new nuggets that I'm excited about to start using with leads that I already have that I need to follow up with. And, um, oh wait, there was one that I wanted to ask you. I When you invite somebody to an online event and they actually check in and they sign it, like they check in for you to read about your business opportunity, what do you say to follow up with them after they check in on that online event? I will follow up with, first of all, I would thank them for checking on that online event. And it was really exciting to see your name and the fact that you did check in to, to at least look at the business with an open mind. I would say that through the Facebook chat. But then <laughs> that night, the first thing that next morning, I'm following up with a phone call and saying, Jess, I was so excited to see you finally giving this business an opportunity and checking in on online. Which way did you want to get involved? Do you want to start with the distributorship or you want to just start as a loyal customer? And then shut up and listen. Just assume the sale. Because obviously they have an interest. If they didn't have an interest, they would have never got online. So when you follow up, Jess, I was so excited to see you taking the opportunity with an open mind to look at the business. Now that you've done that, how do you want to participate? Would you want to do it as a distributor and start or just a lower customer? And then I would shut up and listen. That's how I would handle it. Okay, that's how I'm going to follow up with her tonight. All right, good night, everyone. I'm going to stop this recording, and um, I will post it on the team page um, for you to share with anybody that wasn't able to get on this call.